Welcome in everybody to another episode of the Diane McClay Show. I'm so happy that you decided to join us today in this beautiful spring weather in the Pacific Northwest. My guest today is Adrian Craig, who's a CHC health transformation coach for women and the founder of Life Canyon Limited. She's here to help women lose weight and feel great by shifting their mindset from judgment, deprivation, and resentment to courage, curiosity, and confidence. Adrian and I just had a show. Uh, this is the second part of Nature Nurtures the Soul. If you haven't had a chance to tune into that, you can catch it in both of our archives on Transformation Talk Radio and on our YouTube channels. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll catch you up with what we talked about an hour ago, and we'll extend the conversation a little bit more about how to lose weight and feel great and use nature on your side. Adrian, welcome in. Thank you, Diane. Great to be back with you for the this second is part. I know, right? It's awesome to be able to have these back-to-back -back shows on Transformation Talk Radio and the Cornelia Stephanie Media Group so that we can actually get into these conversations a little bit deeper. On our last show, we talked a little bit about uh, why nature is important to you and to me, what we get out of it personally, and how we apply that to our lives. Uh, let's start off by, um, I'm, I'm really intrigued with how you picked Life Canyon Coaching as your name. And um, I know you have a six step process that's a little different than other weight loss coaches. Do you wanna to speak to that a little bit and, and bring us in, tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, so part of the reason I came up with uh, the name Life Canyon is I love the views of canyons. I like Grand Canyon, uh, canyons and Yellowstone. I just, I love the, energy around it. I love what it symbolizes. Um, and canyons, to me, symbolize um, years and decades of the earth being carved out and worn away. And, and just these uh, visual changes to the uh, natural landscape and there are scars on them as a part of that journey. And I think that's very resonant of our life journey. Everyone has scars from their life journey that they've accumulated along the way. We all change, shift, grow, become more beautiful as we age with uh, the experiences we learn. So that was the symbolism that really drew me to it. And I have a six step process um, that I work on with my clients and it's based on courage, which is very aligned with where you're coming from and your choice and courage. Right. One of the words on the wall behind me is one of my yep. favorites. Um, it's about accountability. It's about non-judgment and that's using curiosity instead of judgment because for most women, we come at weight loss or our health um, goals with a mindset of judgment, um, often self-abuse even. So we want to take that and shift that into a lens of curiosity. Um, it's about owning your power. It's about saying yes to you. And it's about doing it now. Wow. And that sounds, I mean, that sounds amazing. Um, I've, I've had friends and relatives who've actually struggled with weight over their lifetime. And, and I can see as you describe that in your story about carrying scars and having judgment and not having curiosity, I can, I can see how that may have applied to their stories where they feel like they may have to lose weight for someone else, or they're not doing it the right way, or that um, they feel judged by other people for not having uh, met their goals. 
what's one of the things that, you know, you and I connected over the nature piece, and I know you shared uh, a trip with me where you went out west, you, you live in Ohio, you went to some of the national parks. Um, speak a little bit about, um, and I think Jacob will roll those photos, uh, but speak a little bit about what did you personally experience uh, in those natural environments with the animals you saw? And how did you, what did you take away that applies to your own physical fitness and your own personal uh, goal of losing weight? Sure. So I, back in 2013, we took a family trip out West and visited Grand Tetons, Yellowstone and Mount Rushmore, um, along with some other areas. And in some of the photos I sent you, part of what drew, drew me to nature is, and taking a trip out West that was way outside of where I came from is I wanted to experience, you know, a new environment. I was going through a very difficult time at work. I was going through a lot of emotional uh, stress and strain. And that two weeks really restored my sanity. And nature to me is very healing. We, you know, we talked in the last episode about, you know, perspective, um, you've mentioned contrast, that being in nature can give you some contrast. And it also opens us up to um, our intuition and our creativity. And it's very healing. And even in my weight loss journey, so for those who don't know my story, after I turned 40, I gained 35 pounds in four years. And most of that was brought on by just midlife changes to my body accompanied by uh, a heavy level of stress and anxiety in my life. And that trip for me was a way to kind of get out of my zone, get off the couch and go do something amazing, see a part of the country I'd always wanted to see. And we did get to see amazing animals. You know, um, some of the photos I share are buffalo, which are common out in that area. Um, I got to see a, a mother moose with her calf. Um, unfortunately, it was from very far away, so I couldn't get you a photo of that. There's a cute photo of a beaver building its little dam. And I also sent you some photos of um, the diversity and variety of natural landscapes. So, you know, in Yellowstone, you have the hot springs, which, you know, if you touch it, it will severely injure you. You will lose a limb. I mean, we saw an, a little critter exoskeleton that had <laughs> accidentally made its way into a hot spring. And, but at the edge of that, there's all this greenery and, and living and, and beauty. And they exist and coexist side by side. And to me that... If, even if you go in nature, you'll see, um, you know, out west, there's been horrible fires, forests have been destroyed and damaged. But at the same time, it heals itself and it rejuvenates and restores. And you get that sense in your own life. You can heal your body, you can heal your mind. And I was just going to say do that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I was just going to say yeah. that's the metaphor that is coming up for me right now when you talk about it, is when you talk about contrast and life and death and beauty and scars and struggle and, and then surviving the struggle, um, that is, it, it is prevalent in nature all the time. And then it's, um, that's the thing I like about encouraging people to connect to nature and get grounded in nature because it, it actually not only can reflect what's happening in our own minds, our own bodies, our own stories and belief systems, but it also gives us an opportunity to step outside of those stories and belief systems and, and look at things a slightly different way. Uh, and I interrupted you and I didn't mean to do that, but I just wanted to capture, like, I really think that that's, that that's a great metaphor for how we evolve as human beings and how we have the ability to choose how our story uh, gets written and choose what words we say about ourselves and choose what we believe about our uh, emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical state of mind. Uh, you want to, you want to tack on to that? Yeah, definitely. You know, I said in the last episode and I'll say it again, when I am in nature, I never fail to meet people who are happy, joyful, friendly, you know, you never see anyone walking on a trail that's, you know, got a frown on their face or in this space of 
of being upset or stressed out. Everyone's just at peace. And, you know, that's what I love about getting in peace and harmony with your body, with your mind and, and nature really provides the platform for that as well as adventure. I'm someone who loves to travel. I love to visit new places, experience new cultures and new things. And it allows you to do that as well when you get into nature, even, even if you just stay close to home, you don't have to travel to you know the West coast of the United States to have an adventure. I mean, I know where I live, we have a huge park system. I can just pick a different trail and have a new experience. Right, exactly. And I think creating those new experiences and stepping outside of our normal routine is actually pretty critical to the mindset when we're trying to uh, get in better shape, lose weight, have a healthier body, um, make some different choices on our lifestyle. I know that when I go for a hike, um, it would be really easy to throw a candy bar in my pack but I know that for some reason, fruit and granola taste really good on a trail. And I don't know if that's just like in my mind, like I'm hiking, so I need a granola bar rather than a Snickers bar. But I, I, my body actually craves healthier food when I get done with a hike or when I get done kind of participating in a, in a strenuous activity out in nature. Uh, and, and I'm sure, and maybe you can speak to this, that, that, that actually because chemicals are changing in my body as I'm physically being active, is that right? Yeah, I, I would totally agree with that. And w as you're saying, that makes sense. I When I'm out on the trail, I like to have a lighter meal when I get back. Part of that is, I think that energy of being around all that greenery and it just comes back home with me and in my state of mind, I want to enhance the benefit I got being out in nature. So now I want to eat something that's going to nourish me on the inside as well. I agree. I, the thought of having a candy bar on a trail and as you're hiking just does not seem uh, refreshing or <laughs> nourishing yep. at all. And for some people that works, but I know for me, like when I, if I go on a, a five to seven, eight mile hike, um, and a lot of, a lot of nutritionists will actually say that eating smaller meals more frequently throughout the day, smaller meals with, uh, a, a nice balance of protein and carbohydrates, uh, with water is actually healthier than having like three big meals, like typically Western society, uh, conditions us to do. Uh, mm -hmm. so I know that every hour I'll stop and I'll have some almonds or I'll have some peanuts and then I'll have a piece of fruit and I'll have some water. And what's interesting for me is when I'm doing a strenuous hike like that, I actually feel like my energy level stays sustained, uh, pretty much through the end of the hike. And then I always make sure I have something like, you know, beef jerky in the car when I get back. Cause then I'm, as soon as I hit the car, all of a sudden, like all those calories got burned up. Uh, so would you agree that that's kind of a, a, a good step that people could do when they're starting to try to lose weight is to, uh, to, to reduce meals and to eat uh, smaller portions a little bit more frequently in the day? Yeah, I do. That, that works for me. I do think everyone's different. I, I don't like to prescribe certain, you know, mass or common um, prescriptions for people because I feel that everyone's body works differently, but I also believe everyone's body gives them signals. So right. I'm with you. My body gives me the signals that I need smaller meals multiple times of the day. If I try to survive on three main meals a day, I will have uh, an energy crash. And that doesn't matter whether I eat healthy foods that are nourishing or if I eat junk foods, my body just needs little bits consistently throughout the day to keep going. And that really speaks to the yes to you step and, and own your own power step of, of your Canyon program is that you're really encouraging women to say yes to what works for them personally and not subscribe to what everybody else is saying works for everybody else. Is that right? Right. Yeah, that's true. I mean, one, one issue we have here in the U.S. is that our doctors were not trained on nutrition as part of their medical programs. That's not their fault. They do amazing jobs healing us. You know, if you need a surgery or something, you know, they've got the skills. But the doctors who have gone above and beyond to invest in advanced educations that target food and nutrition, 
are the ones that are, you know, really expanding on this whole food as medicine thing, trying to get us to understand that, in fact, going back to the basics of nature, right? And in paleolithic nutrition, you know, cavemen were not eating, you know, a lot of steaks and, <laughs> you know, processed foods. They were eating plants and seeds. When they did learn to hunt, they started in incorporating animal protein, but it wasn't processed the way it is today. It was very natural and it was used for all purposes, even beyond eating. And we've really come a long way from that. So for me, you know, I really get behind getting out in nature outside and bringing nature inside your body for your health and wellness and nutrition. And I try to get people there in a gradual way if that's what they need, because, you know, we've been on these processed diets and, and on sugar and salt for so long that it's not always something you can get over overnight in a day. It right. takes time. Well, and, and to that same point, you know, I'll, you can't just go for a 10 or 15 mile hike overnight. Um, I can't right. take my dog for a 12 mile walk without building up to it gradually and making sure that, uh, first of all, their feet and their pads get conditioned to whatever landscape we're walking on, whether it's pavement or rocks. But I even, I can't carry a pack for 12 days. You know, if I go the whole entire fall and winter and I don't get out and, and build my endurance up, um, I'm not, my first hike isn't going to be a 12 mile hike. It's probably going to be a one mile hike. And I think that's something that's important when we talk about choice and we talk about courage and incorporating nature into our bodies and, and getting our bodies out into nature is to give ourselves the permission to build up that confidence and to build up that, uh, that endurance and to build up our uh, ability to build onto our exercise or physical uh, management program. Right. That's, that's the best way to do it. The, the reason people get into overwhelm and they give up on these goals, whether it's, you know, weight loss or, or their movement goals, whatever, is they get it built up in their head that they have to do everything all at once. They overwhelm themselves. They don't see the change as fast as they want to see it. And they're like, oh, this doesn't work for me. I keep trying and it doesn't work. Well, start out small. <laughs> Build up, as you said, find things that you enjoy because you're going to be more inclined to stick with these goals that you have if you enjoy them instead of putting all this pressure on yourself to, you know, be a certain size or be a certain number on the scale. Just have a goal to, you know, incorporate some healthy habits that you're going to enjoy into your life and you're going to get those benefits. It's when you're stressing over the goal that it makes it that much harder to achieve the goal. <laughs> well, and I think there's a great saying out there. Um, I'm not sure who coined it first. You know, John Muir says it, but but the the destination is not the journey. It's the journey itself that is is the journey. Being able to not being able to say, "Hey, I want to go see that waterfall," and if I can't make it, I fail. Uh, experiencing the trail, experiencing the, the, the gracious people, the happiness, the sunshine, the weather elements. Maybe you get to see a deer in the forest. Maybe there's a flower that's blooming, but it's really great when we can incorporate um, a reward into our system of exercise or system of physical health. Uh, but those rewards don't have to be the top of the mountain or the waterfall. Sometimes the reward is just like getting in your car, going someplace different and being open and aware of what is happening around you and allow that to, uh, to create your curiosity and to generate your intuition and to open your senses. Uh, speak to that a little bit about why you feel nature does that and why that's really important to the physical health, not just mental and emotional. Yeah, for, for me, it goes back to that trip to uh, Yellowstone. I mean, I wasn't probably at my highest weight or the worst shape, but I wasn't at my best either. I was kind of in between on that journey. Um, I got to my worst level in 2015. So that was a couple of years prior. I was already on the journey of losing weight, regaining weight. Um, 
but that trip allowed me to do something a little different every day. Sometimes I did go for the waterfall and I did go for the top of the mountain, but those days were difficult. You know, if I hadn't been on a trip across the country, I probably wouldn't have, you know, uh, gone that far that fast. But I will say while I was out there, I did feel better in my body and I probably ate healthier on that two week trip again, because for me personally, when I um, am out moving my body, whether I'm doing a workout in the gym or I'm out in nature, I tend to eat healthier because I want to continue those benefits. I don't want to sabotage what I'm getting out of that side of what I'm doing for my health and fitness. And I mean, obviously it helps you burn calories and those types of basic things, but really whether you're just doing a short walk or you're doing the big hike with the big reward, when you're out in nature, you're actually connecting with your body by moving. Our right. bodies weren't meant to sit on the couch or lay in bed and be stagnant. They're meant to move. Right, right. You know, and one of the things I want to call back out on is I think it takes a lot of courage to be able to go out and do something that you don't normally do. Um, and it, especially when it's difficult. So can you go back to, you said, you know, I wasn't at my optimum weight, but I wasn't at my best. And there were some days on that beautiful trip to the Yellowstone and Grand Tetons that were difficult. Um, can you speak to one or two or maybe three things that when you realized it was difficult, what, what got you through it? What did you tap into or call upon or, or bring into that difficulty that allowed you to persevere and be resilient and, and really accomplish your goal? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess for me personally, the reward was part of it. I wanted to see the top of the waterfall. I wanted to get to the top of the canyon and be able to look over that expanse of nature. Um, it was a family trip. Our daughter was eight years old on that trip. And so part of the courage was being able to experience the full journey with her and share the full full journey with her and not have to um, stop short and, and not be able to finish that journey with her and, and her dad at the time. And so that was part of my courage. And also, you know, that was a trip I wanted to take for a very long time. And we put a lot of time and investment into planning that trip. And so I wanted to enjoy that experience to the utmost for myself because I had dreamed about it for so long. You know, I've, I've heard you say uh, in the last, in that explanation, I've heard you say something three times. And when I hear something three times, it means that there's a powerful message there. The word you used was, I wanted to. I didn't hear you say, I had to. Many times people are uh, trying to lose weight and they say, I have to lose 10 pounds. I have to lose weight. I have to get in shape. And I think that it's really important. You know, David George Brooks is one of our other podcasters and he's that gratitude guy. And he talks about having one mouth and two ears. I think it's really critical when we say words out loud that we have to remind ourselves that our own brain hears them. So when we say I have to do something, as opposed to I get to do something or I want to do something, I think that we really need to be aware of the energy that our words are saying. So for you to say, hey, I put a lot of time and money into this trip and I'm gonna get everything out of it that I, that I can and I want to, that sets your body and your energy up for a different experience than, oh my gosh, we have to go see everything that we can see because of this expectation. So can you speak to that a little bit? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> you're right in that wanting to do it makes a huge difference, you know? Um, and it goes to what you're talking about with gratitude also. Um, as I mentioned, allow me to get outside myself, ex experience something bigger than myself. I was going through a very difficult time um, I was working in a corporate environment at that time, 
And I've told you this uh, in our conversations. When I went on that trip, I, I thought to myself, wow, why didn't I become a park ranger? Like, I could do the, like, I could be out here doing this every day in my life, just hanging out with animals, <laughs> nature, looking at flowers and trees and plants. Like, that would never get boring to me. So, and, and so I could just be in a state of gratitude on that whole trip. And it was because I was getting to do something I wanted to do, not focusing on something I thought I had to do, which was, let's face it, as a parent, as a responsible adult, that's our daily life is what do I need to do? What should I be doing? Right, right. And, um, you know, the one of my, so I put this quote on, on your show, and I, I think it's, it's critical. Um, John Burroughs was one of the original naturalists. He was more of a literary naturalist rather than like a park ranger or a steward of the land like John Muir or Gifford Pinchot. Uh, but his quote is, I go to nature to be soothed and healed and to have my senses put back in order. And I think you know, in the last couple of minutes of our show, I think that it's important to remind folks that any kind of change requires awareness. And the first thing after awareness is we have to be able to create some options or create some uh, perspective. And so I think nature does that, just be able to shift where we're at and, and how we see things and how we take things in. So in, you get, we've got a minute left. What is the one takeaway that you want our audience to have and how, how can people find you? And then uh, we'll wrap it up and um, we'll, we'll make sure we dive in at another time. Well, my key takeaway is nature heals you both inside and outside. Awesome. And if you, my journey resonates with you and you want to get in touch, you can reach me at lifecanyon.com. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. And you can schedule a free discovery session with me. Um, I also have a free ebook that I offer on how to um, rejuvenate your mind, body, and spirit. And your show, remind us, your show is uh, the second and fourth Friday of every month at noon to 1230. And you have a live audience at the end of your show. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, and then my show is 1.30 on the second, uh, fourth Friday of every month on Transformation Talk Radio with the Cornelius Stephanie Media Group. Uh, I hate to rush us out, but we've got other shows we've got to prep for. I'm Diane McClay with the Diane McClay Show. And as always, I'm going to leave you with empower your life and engage your choice. Thank you for listening to the Diane McClay Show, where you are empowered to enact change in your life through choice. You know that little voice in your head that's been telling you to pursue that passion project? Or maybe it's been screaming for you to go outside and explore the great outdoors. That voice is you, and you deserve to be heard. Listen, make a choice, make a change, and watch yourself grow. For more information about Diane or to work with her personally, visit dianemcclay.com.